Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the World Leaders Forum at Columbia University. It's a great honor for me and I think for all of us to be able to welcome you, Mr. President, President Felipe Nussi of Mozambique, uh, to be at the World Leaders Forum. Uh, our university has a very warm and uh, long connection with your country, Mr. President, and many of us have uh, had the chance to work in Mozambique. We know that it is a beautiful country and with wonderful people, and we're very, very fortunate to have you today. Uh, two years ago, we were honored to welcome President Kabuza to the World Leaders Forum, and uh, we're therefore very uh, lucky and fortunate to welcome you in the first year of your presidency. Uh, president uh, Nussi became president at the beginning of this year in January 2015. He has a very long and distinguished career in leadership in politics and in the government and in uh, many technical capacities. He was Minister of Defense from 2008 to 2014. He's played a leading role in the port and the transport sector. He's been a professor. He has engineering training. So you come to the presidency, uh, Mr. President, with a tremendous experience and at a very exciting time, I hope, for your country and for the world. Uh, President Nussi, of course, is attending the opening of the General Assembly. And these past few days have been the occasion to adopt the new Sustainable Development Goals. These are 17 objectives for global sustainable development, and they're meant to be a very big boost for countries like Mozambique, which we know has tremendous potential, a tremendous need to develop, and now an opportunity based on global cooperation for sustainable development. So we're very much looking forward to your remarks today, President Yusi. After the President's remarks, we'll have a Q&A session, so get your questions ready. And please join me in welcoming Mr. President. Thank you. University, distinguished uh, deans and directing staff, esteemed professors, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great privilege to stand and address such uh, a wealthy and refined and above all demanding auditorium as this one, because here uh, future presidents, future engineers uh, are trained here, but also good chefs, uh, if necessary. And uh, therefore, I'd like to greet all present and seize this opportunity to thank Columbia University for the invitation extended to me. I like to address the academia because we can uh, sell our thoughts. And if it is uh, accepted, it is a boat. It means we can uh, produce a more expensive thought for over the next years. For our interactions, we have uh, selected a burning and always current topic, which uh, justifies the reason for your existence. Uh, and your presence in this uh, prestigious university. But also, it is current because uh, in my governing cycle, it is a priority. We have decided and we believe that in order to achieve success in our governance, uh, human resources should be at the center stage. Uh, the uh, major wealth of my country's human capital, and with capital 
human capital, we can do all we, we want. Therefore, we'll talk on uh, the challenge of uh, human capital development in the context of sustainable development in Mozambique. I had thought that I should come here and ask a question as to what you would like to hear from me and on Mozambique. But uh, then I thought, I felt that there would be a lot of ideas. What I, I want to do is just to provoke you and uh, make you free so that we can ask whatever you want to, to know about Mozambique without fear. This is a vast theme as it uh, brings two major issues, the problematic of uh, uh, human capital and the second part, uh, sustainable development. On uh, human capital, we assume it as a set of abilities, knowledge, competencies, and personality attributes that favor the conduct of the work in order to produce economic value. These skills and competencies can only be acquired by uh, an official, a worker, by an artist, uh, whoever, uh, through education, expertise, and experience. Uh, sustainable, sustainable development in turn means delivering development and the necessary economic growth, ensuring environmental preservation and social development for the present and for future generations. Therefore, we are for sus sustainable development that uh, can uh, feed by itself in a cyclical and continuous way, not the one that discontinues, is discontinued. For sustainable development to take place, there is a need for harmonization between economic development, social justice, access to quality public services, uh, life quality, and the course, effective use of uh, uh, natural resources uh, so that things can happen. There is a, a term we use in Mozambique, and I believe this is the case here. A man uh, who is humanly developed within a perspective of a sustainable development is that man who enjoys welfare, well-being. Uh, in terms, in negative terms, we use, we say, a person who is not poor, but I prefer to use it in a positive way, somebody who is enjoying welfare. Uh, welfare, in as far as we are concerned, in Mozambique means, and I believe this is the same here, having good education, access to health care, uh, power, uh, water, and uh, have infrastructures, good quality services, and be respected as well. The Mozambican state is a young state of 40 years of age, has a long history of building a training system focused on man, which uh, uh, in the past had been discriminatory. Education in Mozambique 40 years ago was only reserved to a colonial elite. It's, it is just like a, a tale for a generation of your country for your age and even for Mozambicans, for you to attend school in Mozambique, there was discrimination and many who went to school, attended school that time, they had to uh, join some churches. Uh, they became uh, faithful to uh, religious, the religion, but not because, just because they wanted education as we have been building our state, uh, facing new local, regional, and global challenges. We developed new concepts of uh, the reality of men, and we knew new alternatives of uh, development. We understand that the development of human capital uh, starts at the household, but it also starts with education at school the first president of the Republic of Mozambique, which was proclaimed 40 years ago. His name was Samora Machel. I believe you've heard about him. He was a different person altogether in his uh, 
and with uh, this uh, culture, the whole wealth of knowledge you have, I believe it will, what happened to me once will not happen. And because I was uh, also attended school outside, somebody was asking me, who is the president of your country? I said, can you say, can you tell me the, the name? He said, Michael Jackson. And I said, I know the president of your country. The difference between uh, uh, general culture was so, uh, so high we need to move out of the box. I just want to uh, cite Samora Machel because he used to say this. We should uh, make a school a basis for the people to take power. So taking over power means having medical doctors, uh, professors, uh, nurses, engineers, agronomists, but you can only have these uh, people with uh, education. So if you develop uh, in a human fashion this uh, way, in 1975, when we conquered our independence, Mozambique had uh, the lowest uh, develop, human development uh, rate, illiteracy rate was uh, above 97%. So in every 100 person, only three a persons could read. You can imagine how difficult it is that to uh, simulate life. Over the first years of independence, the Mozambican government made uh, all so as to bring education to its system. Literacy and adult education was uh, at the top of governing priorities. Uh, peasants, workers, defense and security, members were directed to go to school. Our schools in Mozambique, primary schools, now we have many secondary schools. They had uh, shifts, a morning shift, an afternoon shift, sometimes three shifts, but they also have a shift in the, in the evening so that uh, workers can attend school. And most of them who are in my delegation had an opportunity to attend school in the evening. Today we have so many with higher education, but that was a battle that we were just uh, coming across one another at school, so desks were used uh, fully. It is, that's how through uh, various uh, literacy campaigns, which counted on a broad-based adherence by various sections of the population, it was possible to reduce illiterate rates to 72.2% in 1990. Therefore, after five years of independence, from 93 uh, percent of illiterate to 72.2, this take into account the resources available in Mozambique, particularly human resources. In every 100, you had three. We started teaching people uh, three percent, which means that the speed of training would have to be very slow, but uh, even under those circumstances, we managed to uh, fast track the levels of uh, education and schooling of uh, uh, women and girls, which has, uh, uh, has been our focus, has been moving out of the total of those who attend literacy and adult education. 60% are women. You can see that uh, we have more women as for girls in primary education, 47% uh, of the total pupils are uh, at school, they are girls. We would like to have more because they are the majority of our people. And yesterday, I was saying at uh, a UN forum when we were discussing on uh, uh, gender equality and women empowerment, when we highlight that we need uh, women to be in a, a political uh, decision-making position. That's what we do. But we wanted to take a message, to convey a message that it is not enough to have women who are leaders, uh, who have a political uh, decision. It is important that women are in a decision-making position. But if that woman has no education, has no health care, and has no resources to grow, the living standards are very low because it is easy to state, for instance, in this uni university that all 
uh, chancellors or rectors can be women. Uh, there will be women, but there will always be in their minority and other women who have no education because they have nothing to sustain. How do they survive? Therefore, we have recorded with uh, a satisfaction the increase of the number of girls attending secondary school where the rate rose to 48 percent, so 40, 42 uh, uh, primary education and 48 in secondary education, we believe will achieve our target because in Mozambique, women are 52 percent. Uh, this uh, trend, the improvement of uh, the rate of literate women was affected by the destabilization war that was imposed on our country, which uh, lasted for 16 years, which has devastated the human and socioeconomic uh, fabric. With that uh, uh, war, the girls could not go to school because some of these uh, classes were in the night, and uh, the radium between school and, uh, and home was uh, so high, and this has uh, discontinued to some extent the education of girls. Uh, with the end of the armed conflict and the signing of the Rome General Peace Agreement in 1990, new prospects uh, opened themselves in the education sector. Does the government reposition education in its list of priorities so that all citizens, without exception, could fully develop their potential. That's, it is thus human and social cap capital development associated with the sustainable and transparent management of natural resources and environment uh, a priority for our governance agenda for the next five years. A consolidation of national unit, a peace, sovereignty uh, in the government we are leading. We have defined this as a priority because without stability, there is no development that can take place. So everything can happen in peace if we are in conflict, if we are in a situation of war. As uh, I've uh, illustrated, what uh, made uh, girls lag behind, it was due to the armed conflict, promotion of uh, productivity and competitiveness and uh, economic and social infrastructure development are fundamental because they ensure uh, the holistic or integral development of uh, human resources. And that is not possible when you have a lot of uh, uh, difficulties, shortages, because that uh, will ensure your education, health, uh, power, water, and the process of humanizing education and the school today is a diversified environment of uh, uh, learning and teaching with a, pros a prospect of uh, human development. A school is normally a place where uh, values, uh, knowledge, uh, and rules that, uh, for their nature, they end up being, they end up uh, attracting conflicts that result in. Uh, various and the varied problems that it must solve. It is in, in this regard that we have uh, placed this as a cornerstone of our governing action where we had to establish a specific ministry in a personalized way. Uh, when it comes to uh, development. We in Mozambique, we had uh, ministries, Ministry of Edu Education and Culture. That's how this ministry was called. But we, we felt that uh, culture is uh, a broad area. So if we put education in this broad area, we were just a shadowy one of the areas, either culture or education. But later, we had a Ministry of Education, but they uh, brought together higher education, science, and technology. But uh, we could also uh, see that uh, the education was not being achieved as we would des desire, which is uh, human development. That's why our ministry is now Ministry of Education and Human Development, so that we focus on human development, because 
this is the bedrock of our governance. So our governance is centered, is focused on human capital. So uh, within the framework of uh, social development, uh, the school is uh, an environment where people have to learn and they have to take into account the surrounding cultural environment. They have to learn how to learn. It is very important. We would like to evidence that uh, in the uh, human development process, uh, a man should be autonomous in collecting uh, knowledge. We may study, but when we, co when we, we are at the end, we are not able to address any uh, problem. So this means we have not yet learned to learn. There are people, people who are attending schools are, come from different bank backgrounds and generate complex interactions which are important for development. We are talking about uh, a multicultural environment which allows students uh, to grow through affection. And this is a, a preparation for uh, a, an integration into the society. And as a labor, we see the school as a fundamental institution, not only for the training of uh, an individual, but also uh, for the responsibility for the evolving of uh, the society and humanistic concepts that are uh, uh, conveyed. The school is a mirror of transformation and of its development, and it should be prepared to teach for the future, uh, upholding the most important values of the society. What is important is that uh, uh, teachers and students should learn to understand as to where are the problems of the society for which they are working, and they should be able to find relevant solutions in real time. This is uh, a virtual to understand phenomena because a man, once again, should be self-sufficient, uh, self-sustainable. When you are before a, a, a problem, you need to know how to react and how to to learn how to how to learn. It is very important because you can act uh, in accordance with the reality that surrounds you. Therefore, the school uh, has to uh, provide an environment for a personal and social de development, and a citizen should be uh, mainstreamed in the society as we develop a, a set of uh, systematized uh, activities, knowledge and the personal experience and ways of acting in the world that surrounds them, this enable the school to build a committed citizen with a society and uh, competent in his or her profession, uh, distinguished uh, members of the academia community. Our, governance cycle for the next five years is based on uh, uh, men as uh, the center stage of our priority. Our government five-year program has been structured in an, integra in an integrated manner at, at having in view in order to meet the basic and quality uh, needs of the society. Mozambique is a country endowed with uh, large or uh, immense uh, natural resources from excellent soils, excellent rivers, both for agriculture and for uh, power generation, major uh, deposits of uh, natural gas and uh, minerals such as uh, coal, iron ore, and others, apart from major reserves of coal whose exploitation started in 2012. We have a uh, graphite precious stones, heavy mineral sands, and many other endowments. However, we need to promote inv investment, develop agriculture, fisheries, and tourism. We need to exploit in a sustainable way natural resources. We need to develop social and economic infrastructures that can improve the living standards of the Mozambicans. This is possible if we promote industrialization which is, can only be sustainable with uh, uh, human development, which is the most important capital. Today I was uh, talking at the UN uh, radio. A journalist asked me a question, this ambitious program from your country, where are you going to find the money? Where do you get resources from? 
I told them that the main capital is already there, human capital. So Mozambican human capital should think and find solution to problems. And this uh, money is one of uh, the variable, the uh, factors that has to be taken into account. So agriculture should be based on the transformation of uh, commodities or raw materials that the country has and f different opportunities. Uh, in addition to that, our major challenge has been uh, r research and uh, mechanization of agriculture for the social and human movement. We also have to uh, fight endemic diseases. We need to reduce mother uh, infant mortality so as to uh, improve uh, qualities in schools. We need uh, housing and quality social services and uh, public services. So this is a priority which has uh, clear ingredients that uh, enable the development of this capital. Uh, chronic malnutrition is one of the problems. So health is an imperative of uh, human development. So we encourage production of more food, which will allow our people to have uh, available food. Uh, the uh, malnutrition rate in Mozambique of uh, children under five is at uh, 43 percent, and this is so much what recommends us to focus more on nutritional education. There is some work which, which is being done here. Uh, communities need to be uh, prepared, need to be educated. There is a lot of uh, food. We have uh, family, families uh, who have uh, banana, uh, sweet potato. Uh, they raise uh, cattle. They have chicken, but uh, food habits, since people are not educated, they just eat one single uh, item in their meals. That's why we have a specific program so as to improve the diet of uh, our communities. Uh, yet under uh, human and social development, technical and, and vocational education is one of our major priorities. It is not enough that our citizens can read and write. They should acquire competencies that enable them to face the labor market and provide them with opportunities to contribute for an accelerated development of the country. In this regard, we have been paying attention to this component, focusing on technical and vocational education from secondary education. Today, the country has got 140 uh, technical and vocational uh, training uh, uh, facilities, and uh, we have a number of uh, uh, 64,832 students, of which 23,988 are uh, females. So those who can do can be entrepreneur and employ others. Our higher education has shown encouraging growth rates. In 1975, when we attained independence, the country had only one university. The whole country had one university. After 40 years, we have 49 higher education institutions throughout the country, and the number of students uh, increased to 171,448, out of which 41.6% are women. So our objective to uh, empower women is being possible. Uh, in Mozambique, we have 52% of the population. They are the majority, and they are very important in our production. This implies that any a development plan which is intended to be sustainable should have as a priority women empowerment. As Mozam today, Mozambique is one of the countries that is, is growing, has got uh, uh, um, our growth rate is at 7%, and this should, be, should increasingly be reflective on the living standards of each of uh, the Mozambican citizens growth of uh, economic indicators, yes, but most importantly, what we need to focus on is human and social development. This is reflected in this uh, growth. Education plays a central role uh, as it contributes for uh, environmental awareness, building ethics, values, and attitudes. Uh, education promotes sustainable, sustainable development. The 
sustainable development of Mozambique can only be achieved if we have a strong human capital uh, capable of uh, uh, addressing challenges. That is why we have uh, chosen the topic uh, where this university plays a major role because you are training uh, human resources. Uh, during my inauguration, I will just uh, remind you of uh, m one of my statements on the 15th January. This I said, our priority in terms of uh, consolidating education and administrative institutions is aimed at producing management and promotion of knowledge. We stated this because we believe that the laboratory of solution is uh, an training institution, an education institution. We came to talk to you, but we came to listen because this is the laboratory of knowledge, of expertise. So this University of Columbia can come up with its own brand, a reference brand, which is through its quality of its products. One of the parameters to measure this is the integrity of their students in terms of uh, the demand for their products. One of the major qualities is the level of sustainability of development, which results from a human capital trained here. Columbia University can become a major reference, not only in the United States of America, not only in the American continent, but in the world at large, as it is well known. With uh, my remarks, I believe I I've been able to provoke some thought, to give you some food for thought and some questioning so that we can interact, we can engage in a discussion on the topic that was uh, uh, selected. I don't know what you would like to hear, but I've just provoked you some thoughts. So let's contribute for uh, knowledge production uh, in order to develop the society through the uh, building a strong human capital. And thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. That was uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, you're singing the, uh, the, the music we like to hear. Uh, which is uh, the importance of education for bienestar uh, and for economic development. And I want to say uh, before students uh, that are interested uh, should uh, be ready to take the microphone so you can go on both sides. But uh, Mr. President, I'd like to say just at the start that we are with you. We'd like to support you in very practical ways. We have a number of initiatives of new ways of training, for example, using information technology to expand dramatically the reach of our courses. I'm very happy that my lectures here are on the phone, free, freely available for any student around the world. And in these uh, courses, now 30 or 40,000 students each semester are taking the courses for free as well. So we have uh, opportunities for online education. We have opportunities for helping at the primary and secondary level uh, to extend uh, quality education, major initiatives with uh, Ericsson, the major phone company which has a project on connecting the classrooms to online curriculum and to training students in computers and information technology. We have a training program in the mining sector, which is very important for your country, of course, because the mining sector will be providing huge revenues, and we would like Mozambique leaders to be very well trained in this sector so they can negotiate hard with their counterparts, get a good deal for the mining resources, and make sure that the resources are well used uh, in the country for the development that you talked about. And I'll just uh, say one more word, Mr. President, that Secretary General Ban Ki-moon 
asked me three years ago to help establish a knowledge network for the world in which universities all over the world would join together. We have hundreds of universities networked together, and we would very much appreciate having Mozambique's universities as part of this network. And that way we can make sure that we're sharing knowledge about the sustainable development goals and also benefiting from your country's experience. So in summary, you've provoked a lot of ideas. And we so much admire your country and find very powerful your vision of education-led growth that I want to say that we're very eager to work with you and to help you to uh, realize this vision. So thank you very much for that very uh, strong uh, and I, I think uh, very, very accurate uh, approach to the development challenge. We have students uh, from uh, on both sides now. What I'd ask you to do is to identify yourself, your name, where you are in the program, and then ask a concise question. We're a little bit late. I talked a lot. We listened to the president's wonderful remarks. Uh, we'll try to get in as many questions as we can, please. My name is Job Wetterings. I'm a student in the business school. Uh, my question is the following. Having worked in South Africa, I've experienced firsthand how hard it is to transfer capabilities in higher educated, higher skilled sectors. And oftentimes the countries that are directly investing are way too much uh, interested in extracting resources in return for exporting goods and services. So my question is, how do you align the interests of Mozambique with the interests of countries that are uh, exporting to your country and are actually, how do you get that knowledge transfer actually work? Mr. President, should we take a few questions? Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm from Mafalala in Maputo, and I have six adopted children in your country. It's an honor to have you here. My work in Maputo, I'm in charge of a social company which is not there only for profit, but it has a social uh, purposes, it uh, creates uh, companies and uh, promotes education and health. I would like to know what Mozambique is doing or can do in the uh, future to promote social investment, not only uh, an investment that uh, has a benefit but for some who are, who are privileged. Thank you. Boa tarde, President. Meu nome é Mimi Saunders. I'm Mimi Sandra and uh, I'm uh, in a master's uh, uh, course uh, on uh, human rights. I was a teacher at Edward Mondrian University. I had uh, girls who... And I'm wanting to know how the government of Mozambique or how do schools intend on addressing women and girls in specific and are there any particular government programs going out there to support women in education? Thank you. Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for coming here to speak with us. Uh, my name is Cosmas. I'm a junior in the college, and uh, I'm Zimbabwean. Uh, my question is, my questions are two-pronged. My first one is on the point of stability, which you brought up. Um, this past Friday, we had uh, 19, we had a, you know, a, a shootout between Renamo and the police, and 19 people died in a northern province. And um, I want to know what is your plan for you know, dealing and tackling the problem of Renamo and also approaching uh, Alfonso Tlakama who was causing problems in the north. Uh, my second question is on Zimbabwe. Uh, recently, you were in Zimbabwe for the Harare Agricultural Show. I want to know what is your view with regards to President Mugabe and the dynamics in Zimbabwean politics. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Muito obrigado. Uh, my name is Gary Verberg. I'm a student uh, in uh, development practice at the School of uh, International and Public Affairs. And my question for you, Mr. President, is uh, I understand that uh, your country is currently experiencing a boom in uh, natural gas resources. And I was wondering what uh, the Mozambican government's plan is to distribute the revenue from those resources in an equitable manner. Thank, Thank you. you. Please. Boa tarde, Vossa Excelência Presidente. 
Meu nome é Katie Moore, foi uma estudante. Teachers, a student and teacher's colleague, but now I'm with UNICEF. My question is as follows. In the area of education and empowering women through education, if you could explain ways in which traditional leaders such as Quarenderos and also religious leaders in Mozambique could be leveraged to work with teachers alongside teachers in communities, especially in communities where teachers are not from that particular community, to support the development of women and to support the empowerment of girls to have access to education. Obrigado. Hello, Mr. President. I'm Kostis Kremizis. I'm an LLM student at Columbia uh, School of Law. And I would like to ask you, how do you plan to create institutions that are viable and uh, uh, important in order to uh, a new country to prosper. Thank you very much. Great. And the final question, please. Your Excellency, um, thank you for visitors, visiting us today. My name is Modu Cham. I'm originally from the Gambia, West Africa, and I'm studying sustainability management here. I happen to think goal um, seven of the sustainable development goals is what will take Africa forward. And I would just like to know what Goal your seven being? Um, sustainable energy for all. Thank you. Um, I assume everyone knows all the goals. <laughs> sorry. That's a homework assignment for all Columbia students to know the 17 goals, but please go on. Um, thank you. I just would like to know what, um, Muslim, what you are looking to do moving forward with um, energy in Mozambique, um, specifically sustainable energy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for excellent questions. Mr. President, you have a long list. We'd be grateful for your reflections uh, on, uh, on these questions. Thank you. Well, I wonder whether this happens to you as well when you prepare so much for an exam and you have so much prepared to do this, but when you get there, the exam is so easy. So my exam is so easy with uh, so easy questions. I was, uh, I had a ton of answers, but uh, I wonder where I will uh, unload this, but I will just unload one kg, one kilogram. Well, the last but, uh, one person who spoke will repeat the question. I didn't understand the question quite well. In the meantime, I'll react to the first questions. Uh, knowledge uh, transfer aligned with uh, interests of uh, investors and uh, business uh, men. In this case, you, you give an example of South Africa. This is uh, more linked to uh, mining or extraction of mineral resources. We are aware of that. Uh, yesterday, uh, during a discussion, we have uh, highlighted that uh, uh, knowledge transfer and know-how is uh, extremely important for us. What we're doing now, when we talk with uh, uh, companies that uh, invest in Mozambique, one of the things we do is to ask them to bring uh, the minimum number of expatriate uh, workers, because if the company needs drivers, uh, machine operators, those could be found in Mozambique. And this uh, also helps in uh, uh, reducing uh, operational costs of the company. It uh, helps uh, employing more Mozambicans. It also helps uh, in uh, transferring the knowledge, the expertise they bring. And we are finding a very positive answer. Yesterday, uh, still here in, Nov in New York, I was uh, talking to a company, General Electric, which uh, opened an office this year. But uh, they already have uh, 40 Mozambican workers, and only two or three came from the USA. And they will establish a training a school to develop uh, uh, skills for the youth so that they operate their machines. And we believe that this uh, will uh, uh, grow. Uh, we have another company which is working in Tete province in Moatiz. I would like to provide you with concrete examples because I don't want to talk in terms of uh, generalities. Anyone can talk about that. In Moatiz, there is uh, a group of uh, youth, the most, the biggest 
a truck or lorry in Mozambique or in Africa is driven by a lady, a, a, a young lady. And they, she was trained in Mozambique and some were trained abroad. So they are uh, required to have a, a maximum a quarter or a maximum share of Mozambicans working in their companies and also to establish uh, skills development facilities or training uh, courses because, of course, sometimes uh, these young people are trained in their uh, home of origin and we are being successful. We have this in, in agriculture. We have just uh, unveiled in Zambezi province uh, a greenhouse, uh, uh, an area for planting a three to breed threes. We have uh, uh, people who are, most of them are Mozambican, just 1% are, are expatriates. So we are uh, meeting our objective. The, the young from Mafalala, who's got uh, uh, six children in Mozambique, adopted children in Mozambique, I would like to congratulate you. It means that you are doing something socially and you are leading by example and you are asking how are we doing to promote. Uh, processes and social projects in this uh, case in point to have uh, assistance and incentive from the state. When you uh, register your company, you just uh, explain to us what is the project. We have a Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Welfare has an obligation to follow up on this process, including in education, if these are education projects. Uh, education, the Ministry of Education does not only provide the curricula and the necessary materials, they also provide uh, teachers uh, who can be paid by the Ministry of Education and you develop this project. What is important is that they should be eligible, they should be uh, certified people and they should, uh, and it includes a social area. We have, uh, for instance, religious uh, faith-based uh, uh, religious uh, faith-based organizations and they also have an assistance in our country uh, so we are also following up they are being uh, uh, taken care of I've, I've been asked as to how the government of Mozambique is addressing the issues of uh, girls and this question was repeated by uh, with uh, by somebody else there is somebody else who may, who asked the same question. So 30% of my uh, uh, remarks, uh, I spoke about agenda. I said women are 52%, the majority. And this is a, a vulnerable uh, group of our people, vulnerable to diseases, and uh, they have some difficulties in attending school. If you ask me what support we can provide to community, now, for instance, we have a problem as to why education for women has been difficult. We have early marriages. We are doing our level best so as to discourage early marriage. There is a fact to consider that a lady could only be a, a wife, should only serve a man. We are trying to change the mindset so that people understand that women are equal to men, those who uh, visited Mozambique 10 years ago, they will find a different situation. Uh, girls, uh, women, they are very proud of doing everything. Most of the uh, nurses in Mozambique are women. And the last uh, uh, statistics are asked, most of the medical doctors trained in Mozambique are females. And this has been an incentive when they go back to their uh, homes of origins, their village, it is possible to see that that girl from a neighboring house uh, next door went to school and now she's a, a do medical doctor, she's a nurse, she's a, a driver, and this is good. We are achieving, we are meeting our objectives. So all our messages are in favor of women protection. And even in school, we give priority to women. When schools uh, are fully booked in terms of a, a day, a shift or night. Women are given a first choice to attend school at, at daytime, so efforts are there in that uh, direction. Our brother, uh, our neighbor from Zimbabwe, talked about stability first, and then he asked what is the dynamics of uh, the Zimbabwean government, stability, of course, uh, those shootings are being uh, mentioned. 
I was uh, very happy when you say that uh, you know that Dlakama is causing uh, unrest, is causing problems. This is the best uh, term. It means the international community should be aware of what is happening. So this destabilization which is happening, it has always been there. In 1975, we became independent after independence because we knew that uh, Mozambique shares borders with Tanzania, Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, uh, and those countries, all those countries, most of them, South Africa was uh, under the apartheid regime, uh, racial discrimination. Uh, this uh, has uh, helped uh, in the so in southern Rhodesia was a colony uh, of uh, a minority. So we supported movements uh, who were struggling for their freedom in those countries. So as everywhere the world is supporting those who are fighting for their freedom. So we ended up uh, buying ourselves trouble. We uh, helped to liberate those people, but those who were the masters of those people, armed people in Mozambique, so as to cause that uh, war of 16 years, which has uh, delayed our development process. But the major a weapon we used was dialogue. So this started in 1992 with the General Peace Agreement. And for 22 years, we were peaceful. The democratic process is now there. Every five years, there are elections in Mozambique. And each president has two mandates, has got two terms. Uh, president Shisana had two terms uh, in office, almost two. But he had an opportunity to uh, have to be in a third man mandate because our law, our constitution allowed him one more mandate, but uh, on his own, he said he wanted to relinquish his uh, office. That was an example which shows that uh, uh, power is uh, uh, rotating in Mozambique. Then we had President Gebuza, who saved uh, two terms. Uh, people loved him, but because our constitution uh, so uh, provides that uh, he had to save for two terms, he, he, he relinquished power. Then we had uh, elections which were internationally observed. They were recognized. I was uh, uh, proclaimed the president. But the same candidate who has always lost uh, five elections and he has always complained that elections were rigged and uh, he was uh, he had a right. He's always saying he was uh, election were rigged. But international observers and some uh, foundations from this country were in Mozambique to uh, observe elections, African Union, European Union was in Mozambique, SADC was in Mozambique, and other uh, individual observers who legitimized the process. And there was no reason for somebody who loves democracy not to accept uh, his defeat and uh, congratulate uh, the winner. So in my uh, term, I have inclusion as a one of the key issues. So I listen to everybody. I've, uh, um, I've met uh, President of Renam, President Lakam, but what he wants is beyond a uh, constitution. It's, uh, and I've, uh, I've uh, committed myself to uphold the constitution, otherwise I'll be violating what is my mandate before the Mozambique. So we are focusing on dialogue. We are always, uh, this, uh, these uh, unrest will have to find uh, uh, some explanation. They can't, there can't be any uh, skirmishes in a country which is uh, a democratic, where state institutions are operating smoothly. I was uh, uh, the uh, guest of honor to uh, inaugurate the, the agricultural fair. Uh, I think you yourself, you are quite more aware of uh, the Zimbabwean governors, I know this is a government that was is out of election, where the Zimbabweans have uh, voted. Uh, this is this means that uh, th these are the leaders that Zimbabwean people want. The way they are uh, govern their countries, the way uh, Zimbabweans want. Uh, in international fora, we always uh, 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 share views, uh, democracy. Uh, best practices in terms of uh, democracy and governance so that uh, they are more important and uh, they are away from uh, external interests. Mozambique, uh, in terms of uh, natural resources, boom. The first we want to do is to learn from mistakes of others. We do not want uh, 
a gas to be a curse in Mozambique. We do not want a gas to be the only source of wealth in Mozambique because in Mozambique we've always Mozambique has always been there. We had food. It is not now that we've discovered gas that would think that gas is everything. So we want to diversify the economy, gas, uh, uh, power, energy, fisheries, livestock, agriculture, because this is how we've lived in some of the areas are sustainable in a, an infinite way. How to uh, distribute wealth. So we have to be transparent and open in terms of opportunities. Those who have the ability to invest, be it national investment or a foreign investment, they should be given, they should be allowed room to do that and they should compete. The way we are d distributing wealth, uh, so the profits from this business, not only from a gas and uh, other resources, so we take it for the uh, budget, we build more schools, more hospitals, and we pay good salaries to uh, teachers, to nurses, and we build roads. This is the best way to improve the living standards of uh, uh, the, the citizens. In some areas, we subsidize. For instance, if wheat is very expensive and not everybody can afford, so we can subsidize. In Mozambique, for instance, uh, health care is uh, free. Uh, antiretrovirals, we are just giving them for free because we have a, a high level of uh, HIV positive, which is 11%. So medication drugs for HIV and AIDS and for malaria are just for free. And we do not have a well where we take this money. We use those uh, revenues. So this is one of the ways we are uh, redistributing revenues. Education for women I've already uh, answered, but I've asked, I had asked the last but one uh, a speaker to repeat his question, but I would like to answer the last question on uh, uh, power energy. So it is the next business for Mozambique. Uh, so power in Mozambique is uh, blessed. We would start by uh, uh, renewable energies. We do not need uh, uh, efforts to find uh, raw materials. Mozambique has got a lot of coal and we're exporting this. We can also generate a power out of uh, a coal. And Mozambique will have rivers that uh, a permanent rivers. One of the uh, largest uh, uh, dam hydropower uh, 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 station in, Moz in, in, in Africa is in Mozambique. It's uh, it's uh, feeding uh, most countries in the. But we can do more. We have a possibility to build uh, hydropower stations in Boroma, even in Kaorabasa. Uh, so a stronger or more powerful hydropower station. So in Mozambique, we have a lot of gas. And so gas can generate power. So the next uh, most powerful industry in Mozambique will be uh, a power. And uh, we have a, a vision and a strategy in that regard. We are working in that direction so that we uh, also deliver sustainable uh, energy or power. I wonder whether you are in a position to ask your question, please, the gentleman or the person who made the there is a question I did not answer because uh, the seventh person, and since I'm transparent, you talked about uh, value addition. I think it was uh, there. If, if nobody uh, raises, it means you have understood all I said. So thank you very much. Mr. President. Mr. President. Obrigado por palavras tão claras, respostas tão abrangentes. Eu agradeço os alunos por suas. And uh, we're very, very happy to have you here. The doors of Columbia University are open to you, Mr. President. We hope to be able to host you on many occasions as you come to visit this city and come to the United Nations. Uh, this uh, concludes our session. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking uh, Mr. President Niusi. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats as we escort the President and his delegation out of the building. Thank you.